Hello, good beans, and welcome back to Midnight Requiem. Today we'll be talking about Yvette Vickers. Vickers was born in Kansas City, Missouri, the daughter of jazz musician Charles Vither. During her youth, she traveled with her parents to their various performances. She attended the University of California, Los Angeles, and studied journalism while at UCLA. She took a class in acting and discovered that she enjoyed it so she changed her major to drama. She began making television commercials. She later moved to New York City to model for White Rain Shampoo advertisement, but she eventually returned to California to pursue an acting career. Her first movie appearance is listed under the name Yvette Vedder in Sunset Boulevard, 1950. Although she was not listed in the production credits, she made her first movie appearance under the Vickers name in Short Cut to Hell, 1957, which was directed by James Cagney in the same year she starred in American International Pictures Reform School Girl. Her image was used for the movie's theatrical poster and it depicted her and Gloria Castillo fighting each other. The poster has subsequently become a collector's item. In 1958, she appeared in Attack of the 50-Foot Woman as Honey Parker, town floozy who has an affair with Harry Archer, William Hudson, who is married to heiress and title character Nancy Archer, Allison Hayes. The following year, she played the role of Liz Walker in Attack of the Giant Leeches. During the same period, she made a number of appearances on TV shows, including an episode of One Step Beyond titled The Aerialist, aired on April 28, 1959 and an episode of Bat Masterson titled Double Trouble in Trinidad aired January 7th, 1959 as Jesse Simmons. She appeared as Playboy's Playmate of the Month in the July 1959 issue. Her centerfold was photographed by Russ Mayer. She also appeared in several other men's magazines. Her film roles began to decrease around this time. She did play some small parts in films from 1962 onward including a small role in HUD, 1963. Her last role was in Evil Spirits, a 1991 horror film. Vickers was also a singer in the 1990s. She released a jazz tribute to her parents on CD titled A Tribute to Charlie and Maria. In 2005, she visited Canada for the first time to appear at the Toronto Classic Movie Festival. She appeared with interviewer Tom Weaver on the audio commentary track of the 2007 DVD release of Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. She had been writing her autobiography before her death. In 1953, Vickers married Don Pearl and they were divorced by 1957. Her second marriage was to Leonard Burns in 1959, divorcing in 1961. Her third and final marriage was to Tom Howland from 1967 to 1969. Vickers had no children. She had a long-term relationship with actor Jim Hudson. She also had a recurring relationship with actor Cary Grant in the late 1950s and early 1960s. In 1950, she had bit parts in The Sound of Fury, Glimpse Dancing in the Nightclub, and Sunset Boulevard. Seen as a girl glitting uncontrollably on the phone at a party, thus preventing William Holden from using it. At the same time, while studying drama at the University of California, Los Angeles, she began making commercials. In 1953, she married the bass player Don Pro, a member of the Bud Shank Quartet, and began to appear on television. Vickers' first role was a communist spy in the Cold War series I Led Three Lives, starring Poe faced Richard Carlson. He would later direct her in the Western. The Saga of Hemp Brown 1958, in which she had a scene with Roy Cullen. 
Vickers continued as a guest star in several television series throughout the 50s and 60s. In the cinema, Vickers was a juvenile delinquent who mistakenly thinks she's pregnant in Reform School Girl 1957 and a precocious teenager making a play for a hired killer in James Cagney's only directorial effort, Shortcut to Hell 1957. She was equally seductive as a junkie in Roger Corman's gangster movie, I, Mobster, and in Juvenile Jungle, both 1958. The following year, she appeared as the July Playboy Playmate of the Month in a centerfold photograph by the skin flick maestro, Russ Mayer. This resulted in an offer for her to bring a little sex into Jeremy Lawrence and Robert E. Lee's political drama, The Gang's All Here, 1959-1960 on Broadway. She returned to work on television and played a married woman dating ne'er-do-well Paul Newman in HUD 1963. He introduces her to her father and nephew eating in a diner as this not-too-natural blonde. Rumor has it that other series of hers were cut because Newman's wife Joanne Woodward objected to the intimacy created between her husband and Vickers. Vickers appeared only briefly in three more pictures in the next few decades. By then, she had married and divorced three times and had a long-standing relationship with the actor Jim Hudson. She had reportedly been writing her autobiography before her death, which is thought to have occurred several months before her body was discovered at her home in Los Angeles. Vickers was last seen alive in 2010. She had withdrawn from her extended family and friends her mummified body was discovered by actress and neighbor Susan Savage on April 27, 2011, in her home at 121 West Wanda Drive, Beverly Hills. The month of her death is unknown, but forensic scientists concluded that she may have been dead for as long as a year before her body was discovered. There were no signs of foul play. Her autopsy was completed by the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner who ruled her cause of death to be heart failure resulting from coronary artery disease. Her remains were cremated. Leave a white heart in the comments in remembrance of them. And as always, be loving and caring, my good beings.